Hi, Registers here. Welcome back to the journey of why should one play or consider French tanks. Today, I will be covering the first actual French heavy tank in the tech tree, the Tier 4 B1 heavy tank. This tank did actually exist in real life, and it even served during the Second World War in the Battle of France. Now, some of the unique features of this tank at least on visual, is this stubby looking gun in the front of the hall. Unlike in this game, it's not modeled, but in real life, you would aim with the hall, and this was used to attack fortifications or massed groupings of infantry units or lightweight vehicles. For the anti-tank work, this stubby looking <laughs> 47 on the top where the turret is, is where it was going to fire the anti-tank rounds for its day. And one brief thing historically for this tank, uh, believe it or not, despite the deficiencies of the turret design, which didn't allow for more than one or two crew member in the upper part of the tank, which is the turret right here, it actually was a very formidable tank provided it didn't get shot at the radiator slits, which are right here, for the massive engine that was powered by. Um, they still were pretty decent in the local field, but due to poor radio quality and communication tactics, they eventually started to falter after support ran out. But it's still a unique and interesting design that did actually work, and eventually, I believe the uh, Germans actually converted and used these tanks for backline duties or area defense at the time. In War of the Tanks, with upgrades, it's actually quite mobile, despite being listed as a heavy tank. You have to upgrade the engines, of course, to get the full benefits here, as I will show in the tech tree right here. It starts off with a 180 horsepower engine for mobility, and then you can get a much better 307 horsepower engine all the way up to 350, which is really, I think, a uh, thing you should definitely get, at the very least, get the uh, upgraded 307 horsepower engine so you can move around. For guns, it uh, starts off with the internet meme or the <laughs> 47mm SA-34. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but please, for the love of baguettes, don't use the SA-34. Mount immediately the SA-35 before you take it into a match. You definitely can easily get it with the uh, Suma S-35. I don't even know why Wargaming even equips this as its stock weapon, but just get this first. It has 45mm of pen. It's a little bit lacking for its tier, but at least it actually is usable. Another Rather interesting feature of this tank for the modules is the radio upgrades. It starts off pretty horrendous at 290 meters, but for the power of video games, it goes to 360. But then when you see this number 10 or 9 radio upgrade here, it is ER-55, 710 single range. You actually can see the battlefield better than some tanks that are at level 8 and up. That is unheard of for tier 4, with a few exceptions. It, it is an optional upgrade, to be honest, but it's definitely worth mounting. So I'm going to purchase the upgraded tracks as well for the two match review, as I always do. So it goes from 26, 100% crew, to 28 for the diverse. We get all these upgrades mounted here. Uh, one last thing, the turret does change visually. So this is what the stock turret is. It has 40 millimeters of all-round armor, 300 view range. When you upgrade the turret, it goes to 46 all around and is a more respectable for at least a heavy 330 meters at this tier. And it'll look like this. So. The gun also visually changes from the SA-34. What's up? The best cannon, which is the S-47mm SA-37. This is like a tin can of doom kind of gun. And what I mean by that is it has very high DPM. 
for its tier, so you can fire pretty frequently and be very effective with it against equal tier or lower opponents. So this is what the elite gun looks like. And also, before going into a match, as usual, I will discuss briefly here on ammunition costs. With the best gun, one AP round is 20 credits a round. If you stack all that, of course, you pay 3,900. If you do the stupid choice and choose all gold rounds, which I don't know why you would, it's 1,200 a round, so you would pay 234,000 credits if you mount 195 rounds. I had, I don't know if HE is going to be any use, but I'll pack 10 rounds of that and the rest AP. We've Interestingly enough, sometimes the HE round costs more than the armor piercing in some tanks. I do not understand why, but just for economy reasons, I also am um, starting to take more note of that. Okay, well with that out of the way, I'll be going into the match. See you there. Okay, in the match. So, one thing I did forget to mention in the garage while I'm driving around here is that from here on out, I'll be if I haven't bought or used a tank, I'm going to be using 75% crew or higher, depending on the tank. Reason being that uh, it shows a more accurate way of like what this tank's potential could be. The map is Sig Freak Line, and it's a tier four and three match, so this is a pretty decent potential chance of demonstrating said tank. So we're going to head out here. And as you notice with um, all these modules upgraded, of course, it's actually pretty fast for a heavy. <laughs> you're not going to outspeed mediums or lights, of course, but it can reach those speeds pretty easily. Uh, about 30 kilometers, in fact. Just have to give it a little bit of room once it goes past 20 kilometers. So we see an M3 Stewart that is a light tank, US. As you can see already, the gun fires significantly quicker than the D1, or oops, not D1, S35. I don't know why I always confuse it for the D1 medium. So, it looks like my team decides to stay on D7. I don't know why, but it is a lot of open ground. So, or they just don't understand how to take ground, which is understandable. I mean, this is still like rookie tiers, so gonna have like a mixture of people that don't know where to go or what they're doing yet. I mean this is really the last few tiers where you can really get sloppy and get away with a lot. <laughs> Once you get past tier 5 it's the gloves come off. It gets much harder. And potentially more expensive depending on what you do. So we see a Panzer 3J here trying to locate him through here. Now you might be noticing I'm deliberately firing at this cover. That is because the cover can be taken out with AP. And there's a chance that if I aim right, he will uh, get exposed. And I'll be able to actually punch through the stuff and damage him. Also damaging that M3 Stewart encounter earlier, one with the 3J. The other J is firing gold, of course. So I gotta start wiggling and angling. This is one nice thing about this tank is it turns really well with uh, the hull, that is. So if I wiggle constantly, he doesn't have quite as easy shot even though I am only going 10 kilometers in reverse. It's not very fast in reverse for some strange reason. Alright. Oh, I almost got him. Right now the count is 403 damage. That's a pretty decent hit, hit point pull for a heavy, too. I mean, there's not many tier 4 credit heavies in the game you can play, so it's a real treat to be able to play a tank like this. Take it out for a spin to show you what it can do. Oh, I don't want to engage that. The M8A1. There is a few vulnerabilities to this tank in Wasted War the Tanks, too. HE can hurt it pretty hard if it's high penetration. Artillery can still hurt it, and the tracks are pretty vulnerable in this game because it's very easy to knock out the front section of the tracks so you can stay permit track, as they call it, which means uh, you're constantly getting shot in the tracks and you can't move anywhere. 
It's a valid tactic, but it also could be frustrating at the same time. But I do it to him and they do it back to me. Oh, well, that's interesting. And this is what I mean by permit tracking. And the turret is a bit slow. I don't know why... Oh, I see what he's doing. Alright, well, you know what? I'm gonna prepare the tracks. I'm not gonna try to cut on corners there. I don't know where to go. I mean, they got me cornered and the team's doing nothing as usual. Yep. There's nothing else I could do. I just got circled to death while everyone's just sitting there. Oh well. I mean, 621 damage, 370 damage blocked. Not a bad first outing. Um, could I have done that a little better? Yeah, probably could. Um, I probably should have backed up sooner than I did and fixed the tracks faster, but I thought I could hold out, but that didn't work. So, see you in the next one. Okay, now in match two of the B1 Heavy. So as a minor format change, I'll show the credit results and profits at the end after two matches. Just to change things up, I mean, I don't know if people like that, but it's just an experiment I'm going to try for this video. So with that out of the way, I'm on Ruinburg. So Ruinburg at this time around, we do actually see tier 5 tanks. So that's going to be a problem for the tanks above, say, the blue M10 symbol that denotes anti-tank destroyer. There is still no artillery, but I'm not going to be able to dominate very easily, if at all. What? Why am I getting shot at by my teammate? I have no idea why he did that. <laughs> but anyways, that, that's the player base. I'm just not even going to question it. <laughs> Luckily it doesn't do any damage. So, KV-220 is almost impossible to pen with uh, 66 millimeters of pen. If I loaded gold, I would have 98, but I refuse to use gold rounds. I just don't like using them, if at all. It's too expensive and not worth the benefits. The only exceptions is, to me, is in Clan Wars. Then, yeah, then you can just throw those around all day. <laughs> um, well, I'm just waiting for them to come around the corner here on Ruinburg. This is the heavy zone, as they call it. So basically, you just have to play a back and forth peekaboo game, where you poke out the tank, fire, run, that's kind of how it works. Now that T1 Heavy is actually doing a rather good job there. Uh, he's actually holding down the line here. Let's see if I can move up just a little bit more and see if I can get... Oh no, I can't get any side shots. The KV-1 is really hard to pen too. I have to wait till I can get on his side. I'm going to try something. I'm going to try relocating around. It's a bit risky, but oh! What's this? Oh, come on, come on. Ah, dang it. Well, actually, when I just saw the relocating, the player decided to rush across the field for no reason. <laughs> well, I'm going to go around here and help out the KV-1 and chai -He. I'm trying to go as fast as I can to hope that the KV-1 doesn't see me do this, which he doesn't. It's kind of interesting he doesn't there. Huh. Well, wow. this is kind of interesting. Now, he will see me come around this corner. That's my prediction because, yeah, he's just staring down that area. He's waiting for, like, the perfect shot. So I'm going to not give him that much opportunity if I can help it. So I'm just going to roll around again. And this is the kind of stuff you have to do in any tank, really. It's just some tanks do it better than others. <laughs> oh, the chai heat decides to come around the corner again? Really? The fire though. No. I'm waiting for that KV-1. That's why I have the map zoomed out here. Alright, he fired so I can move. I'm gonna take a chance and dive down this thing here. Alright. And nope, I wasn't able to sneak past that. What? Really? Does he have the 57? Oh, he does. Oh no. Or the 85. Oh gosh. I'm gonna blow up the dive and don't get out of here. So I'm just gonna move out of here. 
And of course, this is where, you know, people get silly. Because the KV-1 is firing gold rounds on a tank with the penalties. I'll just track them just to see if that can help. But the team is doing quite well, actually. Panzer 5-4 is a premium tank. You don't see those very often anymore, but they used to be even more rare back in the day. I'm like, okay. If he wants to get greedy, go ahead. I mean, he's going to be surrounded anyways, so... <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, I'm not going to charge out just to get shot at in that case. Sometimes you got to take uh, the wins with the uh, bad performance on wins kind of thing. I was trying to come up with something wittier, but apparently I can't words escape me. So that ends that match. Okay, so at the end of those perspective matches, let's see how much credits I earned. So the one on the left is where I did really well, but the team lost. Did 621 damage. And the one on the right where all I could do is really just drive around and play support. Um, didn't get a lot of opportunity to fire on anything, really. Um... The discrepancy two of the second match is because I got a bonus mission done that awarded me 50,000 credits. That is not true profit. And also in the fact that I got premium just for logging in recently. Uh, apparently there's some event going on, so that's why I had three days of premium running. So on standard, and there's also a special with the consumables being cheaper. So I got to add 3,000 or subtract 3,000 perspectively. So on standard for the first one on the left, that's match number one. I would have earned minus 3,000 for consumables. Let's see here. I only would have earned 1,977 net credits. So that's abysmal for profit making on standard. I do minus 6,100 minus 3,000 is 3,173 for match number two. So the second match would have been vastly more profitable, at least by an additional 1,000 to 2,000 credits. So this tank um, still doesn't earn a ton of credits to overcome consumables on standard. On premium, of course, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it You get the bonus and multiplier there. Um, I'm also not going to really go into much details on premium, unless if otherwise, because I'm trying to do it from the perspective of standard account without modifiers. I think that's a more fair and accurate representation of somebody that doesn't have premium or they just started the game kind of perspective. I'm going to change that though, based on feedback. So, in conclusion here, as I close for this video, I think this tank, once you get the upgrades, in particular the engines and the turret, well obviously you want to get the tracks first, just like with almost any tank in the game, but definitely getting the engine, and at the bare minimum having the uh, SA-35, will get you by for a while. Radio can be like second to dead last. You really want to get that turret so you can get that 66 millimeters of pen because um, it just is a vastly superior gun. It doesn't necessarily improve on rate of fire but it does improve on penetration and a little bit of dispersion as well. From 0.46 at 100% crew 2.39. Oh, whoops, let me show that here. Yeah, 0.39 for the max gun or max cannon to 0.46 dispersion, which means the circle is smaller and it's easier to hit stuff. Alright, well, hope you enjoyed that video. And next time around, we'll cover this unusual looking tank destroyer for tier 4 for France. This is Rickster's Journey. Signing off.